Good morning and good evening. The 30 power always does support our positive 30 and do the right thing. Um, always um, love you, Tata, and just keep doing what you're doing. Um, today, what uh, I just uh, wanted to comment just a few things about, and um, I just come back home on from uh, Philippines on the Friday. I tried to upload a few videos, but the um, the internet still is so bad back home. It's very hard to upload some videos if you're not in some places. And um, if we have the data, oh my goodness, it takes forever to load. And I haven't uploaded yet. <clears throat> so I managed to upload one video when I was when I arrived here in UK. And uh, I had some others to still to upload, but I tried it when I was home. I tried to do some videos when I was home, but uh, still, the uploading is really, really difficult still uh, with the internet. So some difficulties, and then if not, you have to go to the malls or something like that, but still, it's not that great. So, I mean, a lot of things is happening back home, and a lot of politicians and politics again going on and on about stuff and especially at this moment in time Philippines I mean Philippines um Barakai and the reasons of closing Barakai and blah 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 all this kind of stuff you know um the reasons why we're coming into this kind of stage of closing Barakai for four months or to six months what is the reasons you know our president Duterte um decided to close Barakai you know the Chiefs, executives, and whatever people used to, or the presidents of the Barakai, which is supposed to be looking after it really well, maintain it, and have um, a control of the people who live in Barakai and the foreigners also who visit the island. So why closing Barakai now? Before nobody gives a, a two dams about it, and Baraka is becoming really dirty everywhere. Reasons why? Because nobody's picking up the Vasoda from anywhere. People is dumping Vasoda everywhere. Eh, on the beach, uh, into the sea, and everywhere they live also they throw the Vasoda everywhere. So the chief executives and whatever they call themselves of the Baraka, who's the people who's controlling Baraka, they're not happy because, you know, they're losing business and they're losing this and they're losing that and the people do work, how are they going to get paid, this and that. That one problem is if the people's going to get paid, I mean, that's you guys' fault, your president or your people who's in charge of Baraka. You are the ones who's faulty, nobody else to blame except you guys. Because um, if you care about Baraka, not just filling up your pockets and being greedy and, you know, um, doing the right things in Baraka, this would not happen. Uh, it really would not happen, reasons why, because you maintain it. You will have sweepers on the, you know, on the place. You will have people maintaining the streets, people maintaining the beach, and you will have control of all the rubbish is thrown from the people who lives in Baraka and from the foreigners who visits Baraka. So you guys in Baraka, the, the chiefs or executives of Baraka, who's supposed to be in charge of that, you guys know that, right? Or you know, it's just a shock to you, President Duterte just comes to our close Baraka for six months. And you guys over there complaining. So why letting this come into this kind of, you know, um, extent of being no point of return except closing Baraka for the time it has to close, to clean it up, to put it correctly and to put people and educate people, you know, where to put the Vasoda instead of throwing it anywhere. So, Instead of you guys complaining and all kind of stuff, you guys are losing money. Why you didn't think this before? Or you guys just thinking what Baraka just cleans itself. You know, nobody lives over there. Nobody makes any rubbish or they don't throw rubbish anywhere. Is that what you guys living in? I know you guys living on the island. 
special this uh, executive the president's and executives of uh, who's looking after Barakai. So what places you live in in and what island do you live in? As you travel through the country, don't or through the island, don't you see the problems we have over there? Don't you guys see what is supposed to be done? Which instead of our president mention it and bringing it, this subject up, why you guys didn't pick up this before, you know, anybody else? If you care about, you know, Barakai and, you know, the, the people to visit and it's one of the best place. well, kind of one of the best places to go and spend holidays like for the foreigners and all kind of stuff, but the people's in charge of it. Didn't you see the problem we have? So now, why are you coming through TVs and begging, please don't close Barakai, and there's no need for that, no need for this, no need for that? Why you didn't see that before? Why hasn't something has been done about it? Does our president has to, you know, let it continuously, and you guys haven't done nothing about it? I think, if I'm not mistaken, he warned you people in Barakai to do something about it. But because of the greediness of the people over there who has business and things like that, which will affect their pockets. You see, people over there in Barakai, which has business, they just care about their pockets. They just care what is going to affect them and what they're going to lose, right? But they don't care about the environment in the island and everything else, the nature of, you know, everything else on this island, the sea and everything, plastic bottles, all the rubbish is thrown everywhere. And the people who live in Baraka is the, all the same thing. You know, they throw the ever soda everywhere. So it's getting really filthy. So why this uh, executives of you know, the, whatever they call themselves, who's in charge of Barakai, didn't see, okay, we, yes, we do have a problem. Yes, we're going to invest in it because we have a lot of tourists coming in. Yes, you guys are taking money. Plus, you have a lot of business over there, which is really good. Putting some people to clean up. And it's not only that, replacing vehicles, which is, you know, dust cars to pick up rubbish every single day day or every two days everywhere on the island because people doesn't have no place to put the, the rubbish so what they're gonna do do you think that you're gonna keep the rub all the rubbish in their house even if it's close to their house they throw it everywhere you know it's, it's just everywhere so because there's no other place to put it but you know being greedy and not thinking about that not seeing it not caring it until someone points out we having a problem over here in Barakai you guys better do something about it. If not, I'm going to close it. But our president gave them those kind of chances. And what happened? Did you see anybody move? Did you see anybody doing anything? They hardly done anything. So, people saying that we don't need to close Barakai. It was the best thing to do. When you hit people in the pockets, you know, it's like, ooh. They start talking, they come out, start talking because it's no business, it's no money coming in. And then who's going to pay the people who's not, who doesn't have... It's not the responsibility of our president. Who and what, how are you going to pay those people who works for companies and who works for the business over there. That is coming down to the people who has the business in Barakai, the people who has the employers employed to them, they're the ones who's responsible to pay those people. Because until they've been making money and all that stuff and throwing rubbish everywhere, nobody gives a damn about it. Only now, you know, it's closed down. People start opening their mouth and complaining and this is what is going on. And some people get involved in blah, 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 blah. You see, something has to happen, you know, um, for people to come out of their shelves. It's like a, a turtle. A turtle, when he's scared, he goes back into his house. And he stays there until whatever. But or if any nothing happens, he's out. But when something happens, he goes back into their house. And these people is completely different. It's like until nothing happens, they are still out. 
until nothing goes on and nobody says anything or hurt, hurts them on their pockets and their business, you know, they don't say anything because for them everything is good. But they don't see the problems about nobody gives a, a damn about all the rubbish around the place and filthy around the place. Nobody cares about that. Nobody thinks, do you know what? We need to put people to work to clean up the streets, to take all this rubbish from everywhere. And we need to have a place where you can dump the rubbish in, in the proper way. But does anybody think about that? No. They just start talking and thinking about it when something happens. And this is what our president done. And I'm really glad what he done is really great. And most of it, you know what, is not just only this, is exactly most everything what our president does and it has been doing in our country, in the Philippines. It has been great, you know, not just uh, anything, just great and better than that, more than great. Because if you see previous videos I have and what I've been saying from beginning and everything since I know and since I've been going home and all that kind of stuff for so many years, and the people has been corrupted now their own courts their own jail and some of them is going into jail like Aquino and stuff like that which I never like him and some other people you know so what did our president do our president changed our country in the Philippines our president changed the whole thing you know in the Philippines in our country for our people and he's showing to people who is the corrupted person and the people who has been corrupted in the government? He's the one who's putting all of them in question because all of them in government has been doing corruption for so many years. If he's not housing, he's uh, ghost projects like Trillianos. It's not only Trillianos has a lot of ghost projects. A lot of senators have a lot of ghost projects. A lot of mayors have a lot of ghost projects and signed and other things not in their names but other people's names you see the problem is a lot of mayors and a lot of uh, people on the government has been putting things is not on their names belongs to them but it belongs their names is in somebody else's names so for them not to be caught they put you know let's say they buy houses they buy whatever they have to buy but they put in other people's names like it could be a family it could be a son it could be a daughter it could be and whatever else somebody they can trust that's what they do and the mayor he has been doing the same thing like the mayor in Pilar in Capiz he has things and the money always I keep saying money from uh, Yolanda he has been taking and he has been buying trucks lands and petrol stations with money from Yolanda and he's putting into other people's like families names not his own as it doesn't belong to him but anyway this kind of stuff like this is only to say I'm I'm really happy I mean Boraka is closed is shut down for whatever it has to be done and then when it reopens I do hope those people is opening their mouth and complaining and about business and everything they correct it this time for that not to happen a second time because I don't think is you know if you don't keep monitoring and keep an eye on those things that is going to be out of hand again and then it's going to go back to the same thing so what i can say for this uh, chief executives of barakai and who's in these people who's in charge of barakai which they just care about their pockets this time is one of the lessons for all of you who has business over there it's not just making money and being greedy is about also keeping the environment clean and the place clean to everyone to live on and also especially the people or our people in the Philippines who lives in the island should also respect how to put the Vesora in the right place and those people over there they are the ones who are responsible or has business to have a compound where everybody can bring their rubbish or have trucks picking up the Vesora from places so everybody can throw it because not just only once a week they can pick up the Vesora like we do in Manila once a week and sometime they miss it you know is like maybe twice a week and whatever do you have to need it and especially put people to clean up pay people to clean up pay people to you know um, sweep and keep the place tidy 
and then if somebody throws any rubbish or anything like that on the floor it should be penalized they should be given a fine or a ticket of saying you throw rubbish on the floor you're gonna pay it if you get caught you will pay it and that's what we have to do but I'm so happy Boracay is closed and then when it reopens it will be a great thing the 30 power always love support our president the 30 and we love you Tatai and keep doing the right things and you know uh, since you are here is amazing and you are one of the best presidents we have and we'll never have somebody like you and um, God give you um, long life and um, keep it on the 30 power always love support our president the 30 do the right thing and I'll uh, see you soon I try to upload my other videos I done from back home which is really cool bye bye take care peace